it was a great joy for me and for my wife to be with you all for this past few days and thank you very much for your fellowship in the lord jesus christ for your love for your kindness for your hospitality that you have extended to me and to my wife and god willing we are leaving tomorrow evening back to australia and we value your prayers very much for both of us for the coming months because of the ministry traveling to various parts of the world so please remember us whenever the lord prompts you please pray for us and i really mean what i'm saying i always ask this wherever i am i'm asking you to give me one minute of your day how many minutes only one minute please give me one minute and your prayer must be please lord be with thy servant brother ken whichever part of the world is ministering your word amen so one minute of your time please give us and god will bless you and you will be part of that ministry so once again thank you very much for your fellowship partnership in the gospel for the past uh, few days we have been considering a very profound theme and that is taken from the book of revelation and chapter 21 will you kindly turn your bibles please to the book of revelation chapter 21 if you have your bible with you it is a good exercise to turn your bible please and then read revelation chapter 21 verse 3 shall we all read it together one more time loudly everybody and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will dwell with them they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them and be their god we have been considering on this very precious thought that the tabernacle of god does not god does not dwell in the building that man has made but the tabernacle of god is with men right from the very beginning of creation it is god's greatest desire to dwell among his redeemed people and that has been his desire and we see how god right from the beginning of the bible we see that in exodus chapter 25 and verse 8 God gave very meticulous instruction to Moses and Aaron and told them let them make me a sanctuary i want to dwell among them that has been our god's greatest desire and that desire is continuing in the midst of his redeemed people he can only dwell among those who are born again and in in the midst of his people he wants to dwell and this beloved church where we have gathered is a small part of that and very soon we are going to go into our home which god is building for us for eternity and that is called the new jerusalem you have to believe it and god is building that home for you and for me and that is what we have been considering the topic was dwelling place of god now i want to have another bible reading if you turn with me to the book of ephesians and chapter 3 a very 
well known scripture portion for us and Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 till the end of the chapter. I will read verse 17 and you read verse 18. Read your portion loudly please. Everybody read your portion loudly please. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 till the end of the chapter. Alternatively. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. I will read verse 17. You read verse 18 please. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That he being rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18. And to know the love of Christ which passeth the knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 21 all together please. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Shall we pray and ask the Lord to minister to our hearts this morning. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us together in thy house on the Lord's day. What a joy it is to bring the sacrifice of our praise to God continually. You are the God who delighteth in the worship of your redeemed people. And we thank you that we were able to do that this morning in spirit and in truth. We thank you for every opportunity you bring us together as thy people to learn more of Christ. So Lord, we pray that this time that we are going to meditate thy word, we pray that you will grant us a very fresh anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Please give us spiritual wisdom to understand spiritual things. And this morning, we want to hear thy loving voice from thy loving heart. We are needy people. We are living in a world where there is no hope. But in Christ, we have this hope. So as we Look into your precious word. Lord, please help us this morning. We pray that your son may be exalted. Enemy will be put to shame. And humbly request you that you may help us. Lord, we are handling spiritual things. I acknowledge my inadequacy. Claim thy sufficiency. Have mercy. Hear an answer of a prayer as we are totally, completely dependent upon you for the ministry of the word of God. Without you, we can't do anything. Hear an answer of a prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So God is in the business of building. There are four things that we see in the Bible that God is building. And number one, very quickly we will go through this. Number one, we see Matthew chapter 7. Matthew and chapter 7, God is building our individual life. Don't forget, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 to 29. You can go home and read it. We know it by heart. Because we have studied this in the Sunday school. And reading from verses 24 to 29, the foolish man and the wise man, they build their home. And we know the story very well that the house that was built on the rock stayed. So God is building today our individual lives. Don't forget that. And God wants to dwell in our individual life. Number two, 
God is building our homes. Psalms 127 verse 1 Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Thirdly, our God is building his church. Church is not a building. Church is something that is living. Church is an organism, not an organization. It is something living. And church in the Greek word is called ecclesia, called out people, separated people. And today, God is building his church. Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. That is God's promise. We can't build God's church. If we build, it will not work. So it is God who is building the church today. Fourthly, God is building our new home where we are going to dwell for eternity, forever and ever. That is going to be our home, future home. All our homes here in Bay area and Fremont area, Livermore, wherever you are leaving, you have to leave behind. You cannot hold it. You have to leave it. And if you are born again, if you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, not enough to be a Christian, but if you are born again, then you will enter into that new city, Jerusalem. So don't forget, God is in the business of building four things in our life. And I want to talk to you this morning something very, very important. And the scripture portion that I read from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love. So something very important I am going to share with you. And if the Lord Jesus Christ is dwelling in your life, and if that is being rooted and grounded, your relationship, with one another will be excellent. You understand? Today there is so much of breakdown in relationships. You know, we take so many years to build a relationship. We visit one another's home. We exchange gifts. Our children go for sleepover. And you take, you spend lot of time, money, energy, you make sacrifice to build a relationship. Say after 20 years of relationship, suddenly some misunderstanding. What happens to the relationship? Blown apart. And then I don't like to see that person anymore. I cut off my relationship. No talking terms. Bitterness. This is happening today. We cannot act. We have to be honest. This is happening today in our individual life, family life and church life. Breakdown in relationship. Breakdown of relationship between husband and wife. Breakdown in relationship between parents and children. Relationship between the fellow believers. It's a very pathetic condition we are going today. But if Christ is dwelling in us, if we are rooted and grounded in love, I tell you, our relationship will continue till we leave this world. And my dear brothers, my dear sisters, you know, I always say this, if my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, this is vertical, if this is a right 
relationship, then my relationship with my fellow believers, what this is horizontal, will be beautiful. That is why today there is lot of breakdown in relationships because my vertical relationship with the Lord is not right. That is why I am failing in relationships. You start a business, relationship starts very well, two, three years. After that, you split. Husband and wife, same problem. In the Western world, young people get married, they are excited. Two, three years, honeymoon period. After that, relationship breakdown, small quarrel. The wife says, you live separately, I live separately. Once a week, we will meet in the shopping center for a cup of coffee. This is what we are doing. So, it is the burden of my heart. If God has to find a dwelling place in you, in your family, in your church, our relationship should be straight, should be transparent. It is very important. Now, you tell me, what is the most intimate relationship between two human beings in the world? Wild guess. Somebody tell me. What is the most intimate relationship between two human beings? Yes, husband and wife. Husband and wife is the most intimate relationship that you can enjoy in this world. And I am going to share with you four biblical principles, everything taken from the Bible. Four biblical principles that you can follow for a healthy relationship. And that is the relationship between husband and wife, relationship between parents and children, and relationship among the fellow believers when you work together in the mandiram. So that is what I am going to share with you. Four biblical interpersonal relationships. Number one, let us uh, get into the main topic. Number one, those who are writing down notes, you can write down. In any relationship, please listen carefully. Receive one another unconditionally. Where do you read that? The book of Romans and chapter 15. Everybody turn your Bibles, please, to Romans chapter 15. And verse 7. Young people, if you are going to get married very soon, you need to listen carefully. If you are already married and if there is a breakdown, you need to listen. So, Romans chapter 15 and verse 7. Shall we all read it together? Everybody loudly. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Will you please take a pen or a pencil, underline that in your Bible. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ received you. That is the standard. So, that is the first one. When we begin any relationship, the first thing is, let's talk about a husband and wife. The first thing is that you must accept your partner. A husband should accept his wife just as she is. And the husband and the wife must be willing to accept her husband just as he is. Receive one another 
with all their failures weakness shortcomings good side bad side receive them just as they are now how did christ receive you and me what does the bible say romans chapter 5 verse 8 god commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us the lord jesus christ did not tell us you better get better then i will receive you he did not say that while we were ungodly while we were enemies when we were far away from him the bible says when i was ungodly the lord jesus christ loved me loved me as i am and that is what the lord jesus did do you remember the example of the prodigal son it is written in luke chapter 15 one day the son came to the father and said dad all my inheritance my share give it to me and the father gave him his share his inheritance his portion what did he do he took his portion he went to a far off country lived a prodigal living and when he started eating the pig's food he remembered his house he said why should i be like this i want to go back to my father's house he remembered his father's house and the father came to know my son is coming we read that in luke chapter 15 will you kindly turn your bibles please to luke chapter 15 and verse 20 everybody please turn your bible and we are going to read luke chapter 15 verse 20 all together loudly please and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him i want you to look into your bible again look at that verse once again and he arose that is the and he arose and he came to his father the son but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him had compassion ran fell on his neck and kissed him just imagine dirty filthy eating pigs food prodigal living and he is now coming to the father's house and when he is coming the father did not tell him son don't come to my house you go have a nice shower put on a new garment put some perfume then come to my house he did not say that when he was far off just as he is with all his weakness with all his failures with all his shortcomings dirty filthy what did the father do he ran hugged him kissed him welcomed him and then he had the party verse 21 22 he had the grand celebration if you see in the bible the father accepted his son as he is after accepting him he gave him a new robe he gave him a ring and that is what you and i we need to do my friends in our relationship we have to receive one another just as they are you know the first few years when you get married the husband tries his best to bring his wife to his habits 
you understand and the wife also very smart she will also try to bring the husband to her ways so there is a conflict but it's a honeymoon period they are very happy adjustable and both trying to change each other i tried my best with my wife but i failed do you understand changing work is not our work write this upon your heart not only writing in your paper but write it upon your heart that the changing work i cannot change my wife my wife cannot change me changing work is the work of the holy spirit you know as a pastor of the church i go to visit some family friends the church friends and when i go there the mother will say you know pastor please pray for my son you know he started smoking you know all the complaints and they say pastor please pray then i'll say surely i will pray then the mother says don't worry pastor i can change my son like this i don't know what is this so i ask the mother what is this see we i am an indian so i can say boldly you know we indian mothers they say i can change you cannot change the changing work must be given to the holy spirit what is my work my work is to pray so don't try to change your wife change your husband change your children try to change the fellow believers in the church my dear brothers my dear sister i want to challenge your heart this morning the first basic principle in any relationship is to accept my partner my fellow believer my pastor my elder my deacon my god servant just as they are the holy spirit is to do the changing work in a married life please listen carefully in a married life the best person you can change is yourself acceptance should not be based on performance very important in any relationship acceptance should not be based on performance accept for who he is for who she is for what he is for what he has done remember the golden rule receive one another as christ to receive that is the standard so don't forget this this is something very important in any relationship secondly let's move on the second one is those who are writing the down notes serve one another as christ served turn your bibles please to gospel according to saint mark and chapter 10 everybody please turn your bible mark chapter 10 and verse 45 we are going to read it mark 10:45 we'll read it loudly everyone for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many i am reading from king james version but in some translation it is for even the son of man came not to be served unto but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many 
so the second biblical principle for interpersonal relationship is serve one another as christ served now let us start with the marriage relationship because that is the most intimate relationship in a marriage relationship a person get married to meet their own personal needs and that is self oriented that's a self oriented love but in a christian concept of marriage is entirely different listen carefully i get married in a marriage relationship two people brought up from two different backgrounds they are suddenly brought together as husband and wife so you understand two different backgrounds two people are brought together in a christian marriage so in the christian concept of marriage it is totally different you are entering into this relationship ship two children of god entering into this relationship to serve one another to meet the needs of another person you are in this relationship because god has called you to enter into this relationship so the golden rule is that you must meet the needs of your partner if you do that i tell you our home will be a glorious place our churches will be a glorious place we need to have that kind of an attitude when we come together my dear brother my dear sister what can i do for you what can i do for you is there anything i can help you and when you have that kind of an attitude i tell you our relationship will be very healthy it is very very important when you serve the lord in the local church don't forget this among the fellow believers what can i do for you my dear brother my dear sister let me give you a beautiful example two elephants husband and wife elephant they are going in a desert both are thirsty then in the desert they say they see a pool of water and immediately both of them they come to this pool of water both of them they put their trunk into the water because both are thirsty and both of them they are not drinking they are saying each other they are telling you said no that you are thirsty you drink first then the husband says no 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 you said you are also thirsty you drink first both have got the trunk into the water the water level is not going down is the same both are waiting for each other what are they saying you drink i drink you drink i drink then the husband gave one good idea my dear this is a desert there is only little water if we are going to fight you drink i drink you drink i drink some other animal will come and drink so i am going to tell you we both take out our trunk and we both put our trunk together in the water and i will say 1 2 3 then we start drinking so they agreed so they both took the trunk out and both of them put it into the water and the husband said 1 2 3 3 <laughs> both are waiting the water level is the same what a beautiful example of giving yourself for one another 
and that is the attitude I need to have in my relationships. It's very, very important, my dear brother, my dear sister. I shared this. I'm going to repeat this again. We know the Good Samaritan story. I said this in the cottage prayer meeting. I gave an example. I'm going to say this again for those who have not heard. In the Good Samaritan story, we all know that very well. How many parties? Three parties. Number one, it is the thief. And what is the attitude of the thief in that story? He says, all that you have, give me, give me, give me. The second party is the Levite, is the priest. What is his attitude? All that you have, you, ha you, you have it. All that I have, I'll have it. You stay there, I stay here. And the third one, the third party is the Good Samaritan. What is his attitude? All that I have, take it. Take it. Take it. What a beautiful attitude of this Good Samaritan. You know, the Good Samaritan said, I came, I saw, I had compassion. My dear friends, we need to have compassion. You remember we had a scripture reading, Ephesians chapter 3, that Christ may dwell in our hearts, rooted and grounded in faith. When Christ is dwelling in your heart, you will be filled with agape love. What is agape love? Sacrificial love. And that is what we need to do. In any relationship, my dear friends, we need to have that kind of an attitude. Service attitude. Serving one another. And that is the second beautiful biblical principle for relationship. Serve one another as Christ served. What is the first one? Receive one another as Christ received. Now thirdly, let's move on. Will you turn with me to John chapter 15? Those who are writing down, John chapter 15, and we are going to read verse 12. Everybody open your Bible, please. And we are going to read it loudly. John 15 and verse 12, all together. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And one more verse, John 13 and verse 34. John 13, verse 34, all together loudly. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Please note the third biblical principle for any relationship is love one another as Christ loved. That is the standard as Christ loved. As I told you, human love is self-oriented love. Godly love, divine love is directed to others. And this we need to understand, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. Very important. That my relationship with my partner, with my relative, with my fellow believers in the church has to be with much love. Today, there is, we are living in a world 
where there is so much of imitation. When you go for any wedding, sometimes I am surprised. I also go for wedding. I also conduct wedding. You must see the ladies. I will be shocked to see the whole neck will be covered with gold. And from here to here bangles. Plenty of chain decked with gold. You go near the person and ask, where did you buy all this gold? They will say, no, no brother, this is all imitation. Do you understand? Today we are living in an imitation world. There are places where you can go and borrow for money, higher charge. You give a higher charge, you get imitation gold. You can put plenty and go to wedding. So today our love also has become imitation love among the believers. In our family, the love is not genuine love. It is imitation love. That is why there is a breakdown in relationship. Husband and wife not able to love one another. After two, three years, they end up divorced. Nowadays, it's become a fashion. You know, I kicked my husband, divorced him. He's useless. He doesn't do any work at all. Become a fashion now. Because we are not able to love one another. What a sad situation. And friends, every time I read John chapter 15 and verse 12, I praise God. You know why? Because the Bible says, This is my commandment that ye love one another. Praise God, it is written like that. Suppose, it's only suppose, eh? Suppose the Bible it is written, This is my commandment that ye like one another. If it is written like that, like one another, then we will be in trouble. And what will we say? I don't like you because of your face. Your face is crooked. I don't like you. I don't like you because of your big mouth. Because of your color. Because you are Telugu, I am a Malayali, I cannot like you. I don't like you. But praise God, there are many things in my wife, I am only using as an example. There are many things in my wife I don't like, but I can still love her. And that is why we need to take this serious. How important it is that love is more than liking. And my dear brothers, my dear sisters, I want to challenge your hearts. We need to make a new commitment. You know, altar is the place of surrender. And that is the place where you and I, we need to come. And make a new surrender to the Lord. And tell him, Lord, my relationship is not good. With my husband, with my wife, with my relatives, with my fellow believers, it is only imitation love. There is no genuine love in me. Fill my heart with agape love. With that agape love in me, there is no barrier for loving. I can love anybody. And that is what we need to pray. There was a very great brother and preacher, a very lovely man of God. His name is William MacDonald. And he said these words, please listen carefully that 
love is a calculated pattern of behavior it is a calculated pattern of behavior it is a commitment for the ultimate well being of the other person giving yourself totally without reservation to love the other person and that is agape love i want to repeat this again that love is a calculated pattern of behavior it is a commitment for the ultimate well being of the other person i make a commitment how true it is and my prayer for you and for me is that we may love one another as christ loved one more and i close mudistamu fourthly please look into your bible what is number 1 every anybody receive one another as christ to receive number 2 serve one another as christ served thirdly love one another as christ loved fourthly the book of colossians and chapter 3 colossians chapter 3 we are going to read this everybody must turn your bible please colossians chapter 3 verse 12 everybody loudly for bearing one another for giving one another if any man have a quarrel against any any even as christ forgave you so also do ye so those who are writing notes please write down forgive one another as christ forgave who is our example christ is our example i have the lord jesus said i have set you an example that you should follow my dear brothers we see the disciples of jesus christ was with the lord for 3 and 1/2 years upon this earth and the disciples have seen their guru doing wonderful miracles preaching the greatest preacher that anybody could see is the lord jesus christ and the disciples were able to see that but they did not ask the lord lord teach us to preach teach us to do miracles they did not ask the lord but you know what they asked they said lord teach us to pray we don't know how to pray and in the first prayer that the lord taught his disciples to pray he taught them this this is amazing in his first prayer you see that in matthew 6:12 and jesus taught them to say and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors i am talking about things that we are not willing to forgive others how can god forgive me this is a very serious problem and my dear brothers my dear sisters you need to take this seriously how do we forgive one another how does the husband forgive the wife how does the wife forgive the husband how do we forgive our children how do we forgive our fellow believer what do we tell them hey you did this you wait my day also is coming i will show you forgiven but i will remember don't get angry with me eh we say like that don't get angry with me eh i forgive you 
but I cannot forget. Big thing. That is how we forgive one another. Do you know something? If you don't forgive another brother, another sister, do you know what you are doing? You are putting in that you are putting that person in a prison. And where are you? You are in a prison. Both are in a prison, waiting for each other. Who will come first and ask sorry? I need to take the initiative. I am a child of God. I need to humble myself. And I need to take the initiative. I don't care whether he is elder to me or younger to me. Whether he is a child, I don't care. Christ forgave me. I must be willing to forgive. And friends, we need to take this serious. When we see our own failures, our own faults, it is easy to put up with the failures of others. Forgiveness is costly. You know, Jesus paid a price on the cross to forgive you, how much more we should be. You want your relationship with one another to be healthy, take the initiative. If you have a brother, if you have a sister in India or any part of the world, if the Lord speaks to you, go home. Take your phone, call that person. You take the initiative because you are a child of God. You want your relationship to be transparent. Take your phone and call that person. My dear brother, my dear uncle, my dear auntie, my mom, my dad, I'm sorry I've grieved you. I'm not talking to you. Forgive me. I'm willing to forgive you. Once you do that, you have allowed that person to go out of the prison and you are set free. If not, if not, bitterness. You know, when any problem in our life is not settled, bitterness. Bitterness deeps, takes deep root. And bitterness is very bad for your health, is very bad for your BP, for your sugar, for your health, well-being, you need to forgive because Christ forgave. I want to finish this with an, a, a small example. There was a small child, 10-year-old. She came to her mother and said, Mommy, Tomorrow, I am going for my school excursion. Will you please give me a new hanky? And mommy said, Mary, I am not going to give you any hanky. Because every time I give you a hanky, you go and lose it. So tomorrow, I am not going to give you a new hanky. Mommy, uh, Mary said, Mommy, tomorrow, is my school excursion. Please give me a new hanky. She said, Mom, as soon as I come at 3 o'clock, I will give you the new hanky. So, Mom said, Okay, Mary, I will give you. So, Mom gave her a brand new hanky. She went to the school excursion. She enjoyed. She came back home. As soon as she came home, mommy said, Mary, where is the hanky? You know what Mary replied? Mom, all my friends lost their hanky. I also lost. We Christians are like the child. All Christians are not going and asking forgiveness. Why should I go and ask forgiveness? Let him come. Let her come. Then I will go. You know, when uh, my wife and I, we got married, 
I cannot tell a lie, she is here. On the first day, we made a decision. I told her, we are married. We both did not come down from heaven. We will fight. We will quarrel. But one thing we will do. She said, before we go to bed, before the sun sets, we will ask forgiveness. That right thing. And then go to bed. I tell you, even today it is working. And friends, it's very important that we need to forgive one another. Don't keep bitterness in your heart. You take the initiative and tell the person, I'm willing to forgive you. So may the loving Lord, what we have heard this morning, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will make what we have heard a living experience, a living reality in your life and in my life. Four biblical principles for relationship, building relationship. And I want to tell you, only among such people, Christ can dwell. If not, you are not giving your Lord a place to rest. Number one, receive one another as Christ received. Number two, serve one another as Christ served. Number three, love one another as Christ loved. And number four, forgive one another as Christ forgave. Shall we pray? Will you please close your eyes, everybody? Be in prayer. Don't look this side and that side. Please close your eyes and be in prayer. It's an awesome moment. These are moments between you and your God. You have heard God's word. Search your own life in the light of the word given to you, whoever you are. And in the light of the word given to you, ask the Holy Spirit to search your own life. And wherever you have failed the Lord miserably as God has forgiven us. What are the areas there is a breakdown in relationship in your life as God has forgiven us? Claim his blood to wash you and to cleanse you. And then tell your desires to the Lord. Be very honest. Because you are in the presence of the Lord. Tell the Lord, Lord, in this area, I have failed you miserably. There is so much of bitterness in my heart. Deeply rooted. Lord, have mercy. I have so many enemies, instead of friends, I've got enemies because of my attitude. I don't have Christ-like attitude. My tongue, I cannot control it. Harsh words come out of my mouth. I am not able to control myself. I am weak by myself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, give me grace to live a victorious, triumphant Christian life. I need your help. 
will you please help me and when you cry out to god for a help he will help you the standard is as christ christ is the standard christ is the example we need to follow him i am going to give you two or three minutes say a small prayer in your heart and tell the lord your desire you know the remaining months in this year build your relationship by the help of the holy spirit and ask god to give you much grace to be obedient to his word and to give you grace to apply his word to your life take 2 3 minutes and say a small prayer in your heart Thank you Lord for thy precious word. Thank you Lord for thy loving presence. Thank you for what the Holy Spirit has desired to bring to our attention these biblical principles for a healthy relationship. Lord bless thy word, water thy word, preserve thy word. and thy word may bring forth much fruit and bless thy precious people every family represented this morning will be blessed by you here an answer our prayer the commitments the decisions the surrenders that we have made accept it and give us grace in jesus precious name amen